welcome to Diamond Delight Edibles. I'm Liz, if this is the first time you stopped by, and as always guys, welcome back. Thanks again for all your love and support. It means the absolute world to me. So before we get started, I would just like to give a big thank you to everybody who has bought me a coffee or has sent a super thanks here on YouTube. I really appreciate it so much. And I just wanna let you know, it's not about the dollar value so much as it is that that you value and appreciate the hard work, money and time and effort that goes into creating these videos for you guys. So once again, thank you so, so much. All right, so I'll stop blabbing about that. Let's get into our ingredients, the equipment that we need, and then let's boil up some candy. Everybody ready to get started? I know I am. So the ingredients that we are going to need for our special salt water taffy is a total of two cups of sugar. So you can use two cups of regular sugar or one cup of special sugar and one cup of regular sugar. That's totally up to you. One cup of a light corn syrup. Two tablespoons of butter, so you can either use regular butter or you can use that butter. We need a half a cup of water. Two tablespoons of corn starch. A quarter teaspoon of salt. And then the food coloring and the flavors that you would like to make your salt water taffy with. So I'm gonna be doing orange banana, sorry, orange, strawberry, and banana cream. Yum, yum. So for the banana cream, one, I use imitation banana and uh, banana cream and the Lorraine oil. It's a really nice mix, otherwise I find this one too strong on its own. I'm just going to show you the equipment that we need and then we're ready to get started. Alright, so the equipment that we were going to need for our salt water tappy is two pots, one medium sized pot and one smaller pot. And you want your cooking pot to be a heavy bottom pot. That way your heat distributes evenly. If you've got thin bottom pots, chances are you're gonna have hot spots and your syrup will be at different temperatures in different parts of the pot. And we don't want that. So a good heavy bottom pot is best recommended. You're gonna want a candy thermometer. So need a kind, a spatula, a pastry brush, and measuring spoons and measuring cups. A cup of boiling water and a parched lined, one or two parched lined cookie sheets, depending on how much, uh, how many different flavors you're planning on making. So if you do want to make a lot of different flavors, I recommend only making maybe two flavors per batch um, until you get really familiar working with it. Otherwise, you just may end up with a huge sticky mess that you don't want. So uh, take it in baby steps, a little at a time. And as you get said, get better at it, you can definitely increase the amount of flavors that you, if you'd like in one batch. So that's it for our equipment. Let's jump in, let's get this candy made. Alrighty, so to make our salt water taffy, you want to put your, into your pot, your sugar or sugars. And um, always check in the directions because I will give you more details when it comes to the special ingredients of how you can incorporate things. We're going to add in our two tablespoons of cornstarch. Next, we're going to add our corn syrup. And a little trick for you, spray a little um, cooking spray into your measuring cup. And that will prevent your corn syrup from sticking to the cup. In she goes. And that's the way we're able to get out pretty much all of our corn syrup. Next goes in our butter. So because I'm using the special sugar, I'm gonna just use one regular and one special. Last thing we're gonna do is put in our one cup of water. And now we're gonna stir this around to all the water. It just the water, everything becomes combined. And then just mush down any large lumps if they're in there. Now it's time to cook up our candy syrup. I'm uh, set your stove to medium high and you're going to continue to stir your syrup until it begins to boil. The moment that it begins to boil, you're going to stop stirring and attach your candy thermometer. And then the only thing that you're going to touch after 
is to use your pastry brush and your hot boiling water to wash down the sides of the pot. So uh, go over here, I'll bring the camera over so you can see exactly what's going on. So every periodically you're going to want to take your pastry brush and wash down the sides of your pot to get down any of the sugar crystals that might be sticking. So our syrup started boiling. I'm going to stop stirring at this point and you're not going to stir your syrup again. As I said, the only thing you're going to do every every minute, couple minutes is just wash down the sides of the pot. Now it's important that your pot is big enough because it is going to bubble up about two to three times its original size of what we started. This is when it is cooking off the impurities and everything in the sugar and everything else that's in there. So it will bubble up for quite a bit and then it'll simmer back down to back down to here, back down to normal size. And now we want to attach our candy thermometer. We're going to boil our syrup to 245 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can boil it between 242 and 248. 248 is going to be uh, firmer. Obviously, and the lower the temperature, it's going to be softer. So about between 246 and 248 is, is, I find, is a pretty good ideal temperature. But again, you can play with those different temperatures, a couple different temperatures there, to get the exact consistency that you like in your salt water taffy. And one thing to note, your syrup at first is going to get up to about 224, 225 fairly quickly. And it's going to sit at that temperature for about maybe five to seven, even a little bit longer, depending on your stove. Don't worry, your syrup is cooking. It, uh, at this point is where it takes the longest amount of time for the um, temperature to increase because of the amount of water. As that water evaporates, it starts to heat up quicker. So once you get past the 230 mark, the temperatures are going to start to go up very rapidly. But you don't want to step away from your stove. Um, because, yeah, you'll burn your sugar, guaranteed. I Trust me, from experience. Once we hit temperature, remove it from the heat immediately, and we're going to add in our quarter teaspoon of salt. And now I'm going to pour it onto our cookie sheet. I'm just going to flip us around here. So I'm going to do a pour for two colors and the third rest of it for the third I'm going to put in my little pot that I put to warm up on the stove. So I'm just going to, can you see me? My banana, maybe my strawberry. Actually I don't have to change pots, I'm just going to put this on that warm. I don't want it to boil anymore, I just want to keep it warm. Alright, then once you pour your syrup onto the tray, we're going to add our flavoring. This side banana, I'm adding a little extract and just a couple of drops, a few drops of the oil. The oil is very high concentrate in flavor, so you really don't want to add too much. I might add it too much. A little bit of our red food coloring. Our yellow. Then I'm just going to give those a quick stir in. That will be my middle. And now you might see with a lot of people who make do candy recipes that they add their flavor in as soon as it comes off the soap off the stove and it's still bubbling hot. I don't recommend doing that because when you do it, you cook off you cook off immediately a bunch of your flavor. So you're better to pour it onto your pan first or let it sit in the pot for a little bit just until that boiling that bubbling stops, then add your flavoring. So I'm just going to wait for this to cool down a little bit, cool enough so that I can handle it. Now, I recommend using some rubber gloves, forgot to tell you that, um, some rubber gloves that will help with the heat. Uh, however, there are um, specific sugar work 
gloves uh, that are very heat resistant. If you're somebody who works with hard candies and this type of sugar, you may want to invest in a pair of sugar work gloves. However, for those, you can just use a pair of rubber gloves. It does help a bit. And then you can start trying to get start pulling it away from the parchment. If it just continues to stick to it, let it uh, leave it for another minute or two, and then again start working it. Hope you can see that. When it's kind of cool enough, it'll just peel right up. But if it's too hot, it's going to stay melted onto it. Now you can also always grease. You can always grease your parchment paper. That'll make it easier to come up. I kind of forgot that step. It's been a while since I made this. I said just keep working it like this and it will all come. It will all come off. Got them. Go. So once it is um, an okay temperature for you to not burn your hands and whenever you're working with sugar, please be very, very careful. It can be very dangerous. So we've got our not too hot to handle saltwater taffy here. Well, right now it's just candy. This is a step that gives saltwater taffy its unique texture and, um, and flavor. So you're just gonna begin to stretch out and pull out your candy. You just pull, put it, fold over. There's no particular way, just keep pulling, stretching, putting it back, pull, stretch. You're gonna get a good workout doing this recipe. So you're going to continue to pull your candy until it becomes opaque and nice and shiny. So it takes probably about five, six minutes per color. So I said, you will get your workout. I'm gonna be so sore tomorrow. These skinny little arms can't take this. And you'll also notice with your uh, salt water, the candy, it will become lighter and lighter. So our salt water taffy, as you can see, is a lot lighter and it's now opaque versus how we started. So that's what you want it to be. Once you're happy there, you want to roll it into a rope. You want it probably about, I don't know, about a half an inch or so in diameter. know about that size and once I've done you can move on to your other color and flavor and it's the same thing all over again now that we've got um, I'm only going with two flavors today I do not have the strength to do the third one <clears throat> now that we have them ready you want to cut up some wax paper aka or parchment paper into squares and then we're going to cut up our candy. Now, if you want to actually combine your two flavors together, you can take off a chunk, do the same size. Just kind of give them pull, pull together. There we go and then just roll her back up. Just like so. Slippery little sucker. That's it, you wanna take your sharp knife. Can I have that please? please? Sharp knife, yep, I forgot to tell you in part of the tools, but who doesn't have a sharp knife around? And you want to make about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or so size cuts. Bite size. That's a little big for bite size. Whatever your bite size is. And if you want to be um, specific in having the same size pieces, you can use a scale to weigh it out. So if you uh, if it's important that each piece weighs the same amount, 
then uh, use a kitchen scale to, to cut up your pieces and weigh them out. So this recipe should make about 50 candies for you and you can keep them up to probably about six, six, uh, four to six weeks should be good because we don't use any preservatives. They're not going to last as long as a store-bought candy. So I believe about four to six weeks is a good shelf life for these guys. All right. I hope you enjoyed that video. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for joining. As always, a cup of coffee is greatly appreciated or a super thanks. Awesome way to show your appreciation. Thanks so much for joining and you have an awesome rest of your day.